I'm on yet. We're going to do different, but I want to... <clears throat> See if I can do this. This is going to mess up the act a lot. Y'all just hold off. <laughs> no place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than hearing your love. Sing it, Craig. Hearing your love. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be No place I would rather be Than hearing your love Hearing your love, Lord So set a fire down in my soul I can't contain and I can't control I want more of you, God I want more of you, God There is no place I would rather be No place I would rather be No place I would rather be Than hearing your love, hearing your love, Lord No place I would rather be No place I would rather be No place I would rather be then hearing your love, hearing your love, Lord. Okay, the screens are going to have different on them. This is a Micah Tyler song. This kind of fits the uh, fits the day for me. I don't want to hear anymore. Teach me to listen. I don't want to see anymore. Give me a vision You could move this heart To be set apart I don't need to recognize The man in the mirror I don't want to trade your plans For something familiar I can't waste a day I can't stay the same I want to be different, want to be changed Till all of me is gone and all that remains A fire so bright that the whole world can see that There's something different, come and be different in me Don't want to spend my life stuck in a pattern Don't want to gain this world, lose what matters So I'm giving up everything because I want to be different, I want to be changed Till all of me is gone and all that remains a fire so bright that the whole world can see There's something different, come and be different I know that I am far from perfect Through you the cross still says I'm worth it Take this beating in my heart Come and finish what you've started When they see me, let them see you I want to be different Yeah I want to be different want to be changed Till all of me is gone And all that remains Is a fire so bright that the whole world can see that there's something different 
come and be different. I just want to be different. Could you be different in me? Announcements for today. Uh, looks like Scouts is starting back up. Uh, we've got, uh, towards the end of this week, Washita County Fair, so hope that you'll come out and join us for that. Uh, next week on Sunday is the fifth Sunday, um, so it's going to be pretty much just singing. I'd like to say that Pastor Mike's going to have the day off, but you're really not because you're going to be singing. Um, and then that evening, um, we're going to be getting together as a church. That'll be, we'll be kicking off youth at, my wife's telling me, 5.30. Uh, we'll be at the park for uh, some homemade ice cream. So we're going to have ice cream before we have supper, um, is what I'm taking from that, right? <laughs> just, yeah. I'm just giving her a hard time. But yeah, we'll we'll be having having ice cream. We'll we'll get the date in the bulletin. Or I mean not the date, the time in the bulletin for next Sunday. Uh but it'll be um all the youth, the whole church come out. Um we're gonna have homemade ice cream. So if somebody if you wanna bring ice cream, that'd be great. If you wanna bring something to go along with it, that's fine. Um but we welcome everybody to come out, and I think we're going to try to talk Pastor Mike into bringing his guitar and do a little singing, and, and uh, we'll try to play some volleyball or something. It'll just be a good time to fellowship with one another, so hopefully the weather will be good. Um, Sunday school classes are going to be kicking off for everybody on September the 12th. Um, is there anything else that needs to be brought up that I might have missed or overlooked? All right, well, let's stand up and greet one another this morning. All right, if everybody can make their way back to their pews and join me in this morning's call to worship. We can trust God. God loves all the people. We can depend on God. Praise our loving God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Pastor Mike, would you open us in a word of prayer?
Will you pray with me? Almighty and gracious God, there is no one like you. You are always true as, as are your promises. You listen to us patiently with the compassion of a good father. You also answer us with perfect wisdom. You brought us salvation when no one else could. We confess that we sometimes neglect prayer and time with you. We also admit that we fail to follow through your commandments. Yet you call us to repentance, and in you we find the abundance of life. Forgive us this day, Lord, for our failures and our lack of trust, and grant us the precious gift of your loving grace. As we say the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Yeah, I'm wanting to rush through this, if you can't tell by looking at your bulletin. I'm, I'm ready to get on with it today. I'm ready. I'm going to do the same thing in the sermon. I'm going to jump two or three pages at a time just because I am so anxious to get to it this morning. So let's stand and say what we believe this morning as we repeat the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen and amen. Would you please remain standing for our opening hymn this morning on page 577 in your red hymnal, God of Grace and God of Glory.
Thank you. You may be seated. The children would come forward for children's moments. How are y'all this morning? Good? Great? Glorious? School is back in. So it's fun, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a positive, by the way. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've got a story here. I just want to... We're going to talk about prayer today, okay? And so as we talk about prayer, we also call it, I do anyway, conversation, right, with God. So you ever have friends that you, you, you know, you're sitting around a table eating pizza, whatever you might, you know, tacos, if it's Tuesday, uh, you're eating tacos, whatever you're eating, whatever you're doing, but you, you really can't think of what to say. You know, you're supposed to be having fun and talking and you just can't, like right now, you can't think of what to say, right? <laughs> you can't. It's hard. It's difficult sometimes to start a conversation. So I learned this this week, so I have it on my phone so I don't forget it, okay? I learned this a long time ago, but, you know, sometimes it's hard to remember stuff. So I'm going to teach you how to talk to God, okay? Remember, we, we used our hand one day, and it was really confusing because Pastor Mike didn't know what he was talking about. I do today. It's about prayer, okay? So put your hands like this. This is called the uh, finger prayer, the five-finger prayer. Our hands are together. So the first thing that we see is what? Thumbs. Very good. Closest thing to us, right? So that reminds us that we're going to pray for the closest thing to us, like our parents, like our siblings, our brothers, our sisters, cousins, whatever it might be. Those thumbs remind us, start your prayer, praying for those closest to you. Okay, the next finger is your index finger. You use it for, no, index. Don't, don't confuse me. Really, it's index. Show me your index finger. Right here. No, do this. Okay, index finger. Okay, ring finger. <laughs> it's a modern world. They're all ring fingers now. The, uh, so so the, this is the finger that I use to point with, right? So you let this finger remind you that you... Uh, you should be pointed in the right direction. Pray for those people who point you in that right direction, okay? As you put your hands, the second thing you should pray for is your teacher at school, your Sunday school teacher, anybody who guides you, leads you, right? Anybody who points you in the right way, that's who you should pray for, the second. Even your pastor. Be sure and pray for me, okay? All right, the next finger is the tallest finger, this finger reminds us to pray for the leaders, pray for, say, the president, other leaders in our governments, our mayor, the governor, those who are leaders in the town, just leaders, leaders at the school, your principals, superintendents, school board members. So the fourth finger is called the ring finger. <laughs> No, it's not, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this, this finger is the, uh, is, the, is the weakest finger. I learned that when I was a kid because I took piano lessons, and I don't know why it's the weakest finger, but that ring finger is the weakest finger, not in our marriage, honey, but uh, it's, uh, it's, the, it's supposedly the hardest finger to actually do things with because you have to concentrate on it. So anyway, it reminds us to pray for those people who are weak, those people who are sick, those people who need healing. So that would be that finger. And so the next finger is pinky. We're in agreement. Pinky finger. So the pinky finger is way over there, right, as we pray. So what we want to do is we want to look at that and think, that's the smallest finger. And that's the way I should think of myself. I'm the smallest, right? All these other people, 
are not so small as me. I am humbly a servant of God. So we pray for ourselves. The last thing, right? Pray for yourself. Pinky, rem- hello. It reminds you, pray for yourself. Delaney, pray for yourself. You're the pinky, okay? So the next time that you're having a conversation with God, just put your hands together and you'll know what direction you need to go, what you need to pray just by looking at your fingers, right? Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for prayer. It's good to have a friend to talk to. But even friends sometimes have trouble thinking of something to say. So help us to remember the five-finger prayer, to remember those who need our prayers. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone have any joys or concerns they'd like to share with the congregation this morning? I just want to let everybody know Deborah has a birthday tomorrow. And I may be in trouble, but (laughs) anyway, she's got a birthday tomorrow. Thank you. Are there others this morning? I'd like to ask prayer for my son-in-law, Levi. He's starting his third week fighting fires in Montana into Idaho. So if you could remember him and all the men and women that are fighting it with him. Are there others this morning? Let's pray. Almighty, gracious God, you are the creator, the giver of life. You give us life abundantly and ask us to live it exactly that way. We ask for your prayer, or for your thoughts this morning to be with those that we've lifted up either in word or lifted up on the page here. So many blessings, but yet you're still the God who gives and takes away. We bless your holy name in regard to everything that you give us. We bless your holy name. We want to uh, ensure that you understand that Levi is in a place that is, uh, well, a hero's place with all the firefighters. All those men and women that fight fires and keep us safe. We want to pray for all those on the front line of the the new age battle with COVID. We have uh, we have been through so many things, and you prepare us to be on a journey through these as well. We trust in you that you will be beside us. In your word, it says, always. So we trust. We thank you for celebrations. Deborah's birthday, we we celebrate that. It's just a number, Lord. We know it's just a number. We celebrate those anniversaries. Fred reminded me this morning that he didn't say it was his anniversary <laughs> this morning. <laughs> lots of time together and lots of celebrations. We all have those. Just be mindful that we are mindful of you. As it says in your word, you're mindful of us. And we, we want to take that to an extreme at times and make sure that you understand what we need. And we're going to talk about that today as we go forward in this, Lord. We're going to talk about conversations with you and and what they might seem like, and what they might be like, and what they might sound like. It should always be a conversation with you. And we thank you for the opportunity to come to you in this way. We thank you for the opportunity that you give us each and every moment of the day to reach out to you. As we reach today, answer our prayers, O Lord. The psalmist says, hear our prayers. We ask these things in your precious name today. 
Amen and amen. You are the God who gives. You bless us in so many ways. Take these blessings that we offer up to you. Multiply them to do your will in this community and beyond. In this church, in this city. We ask these things because we know it's in your power. We thank you for the blessings. Amen and amen. This morning's scripture lesson comes to us from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 14. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, 
and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, and he went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. The word of God for the people of God. We're going to get to Elijah, and we're going to get to the first kings. One of my favorite stories in all of Scripture is Elijah himself, just the things that he, that he did, the things that he saw, and then here he still has some questions. So I think we'll all fit right into that group, the things that we've seen in our lives and <clears throat> how the how they've transpired and how they've changed us, how they've built the person that we are today. So we're going to talk about that. First, I want to talk to you about a farmer. There's this story that I heard this week, and as I say, the same person that told me, reminded me of this story also said last week that that guy Jeff, that's what they called you, he brought his pulpit down there where you like to preach. Brought that little metal pulpit, they said. <laughs> so why don't you do that instead of just walking down? I said, well, you know, I've got to get some exercise somewhere. You know, it's football season, so from the fridge to the recliner is kind of a short exercise trip, so this gives me a little more. And I said, besides that, if I took that little metal pulpit down there, as you call it, <laughs> I'd probably knock it over before, <laughs> before I did anything else with it, right? Anyway, this Jewish, Jewish farmer. I'll put it in that term. That way it seems biblical, right? He ended up stuck in his field for the uh, Sabbath Sunday. As the, as the sun went down, the farmer realized he would have to remain in the field until sunset the next day, for according to the law, the Sabbath uh, prohibited travel. This resulted in him missing both the synagogue services and the family's cedar meal that night. Arriving at home the next evening, he was met by his angry wife and well, a fuming rabbi. The rabbi began to lay into the farmer for not taking the Sabbath more seriously. Finally, he asked, What did you do in the field by yourself all day? Did you at least pray? Rabbi, the farmer said, I'm not a very smart man, and I don't know many prayers. All the prayers I knew, I said, in five minutes. What I did the rest of the day was simply recite the alphabet. You see, I left it up to God to make some words out of all those letters that I prayed. I just, okay, you can chuckle, or uh, do I need to? I need a board so I can write on here. A would be for what word? B would be, anyway. Okay, sometimes you fail as a pastor, and, and then you just step off the pulpit and realize that you're doomed. It's a bad Sunday. I am so glad to be back. I, that's why I'm not bringing that little metal pulpit with me because I would knock it over, I'm sure, today. So. so the question today is, why don't we pray more? Why, why don't we pray more? I really don't have time. You see, I, this morning I got up and the car wouldn't start. I had to jump it. I didn't have time to pray. Uh, then as I'm driving down the road, I get a flat tire and I, you know, had to, Changed the tire, and I, I, I didn't have time to pray. And then, you know, I had to go back to the house, and we got breakfast, brought it to the kids, brought, and then took the kids uh, to school, and, and so I didn't have time to pray. I didn't, have, I didn't have time to check in with God today because I've got so much going on in my life. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Besides that, I don't pray more because I really don't really understand how to pray. I really don't understand the, the concept of praying to somebody that I, I never hear. I, I, I don't let him answer, for one thing. I, 
I keep praying. It says pray continuously. In the Bible, it never says stop and wait and let's see what God's saying back to you. It never really defines, yes, it does, Melinda, I know, but it's part of the story. And, and so, <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> when she looks at her watch and then frowns, I know. I'm, see, I told you, I'm doomed. I didn't have time to pray this morning, and so it's going to go this way the rest of the day, right? So tomorrow morning, you can bet the first thing, actually this morning, I, I, I started off my morning different than I usually do. Usually I wake up and say, what's going to happen today? <laughs> okay, God, what's going to happen today? And this morning I, I woke up and I thought, thank you, Lord, for waking me up. Thank, there's sun peeking through the window, and uh, I'm thinking, thank you for the storms to be over. The storms in my life, the storms last night, the thunder, the lightning, and all that is gone. So I'm really feeling close to Elijah today. I said, thank you, Lord, for everything that you've given me. And then I had two cups of coffee, and I feel a lot better about the world. Those coffee beans are important. I can imagine when he created them, he thought, this is going to help Pastor Mike right here. Amen? So, another thing about prayer that's, that's difficult is we, I love my sister, and, and so we were talking, and she goes, I've been praying for you every night when I lay down, and, and, uh, and she said, uh, but I have to apologize, and I said, for praying for me? And she said, she said no, I, I, I will be praying along, and then the next thing I know, I'll wake up, and it's like 5 o'clock in the morning, and I've fallen asleep while I was praying. So I've kind of lost the connection, you know, and I said, oh, I think you haven't lost the connection. I think, uh, I think everything's fine, you know. Sometimes we just get bored when we're praying, right? Because we are repetitive in our prayer. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So sometimes, we, yeah, we get, we get kind of bored with it. I made myself some notes today. This is something that I don't normally do, okay? So what else do we do about prayer, some of the things? Because I don't want to forget some of these things. The other things that we do about prayer, we think, you know, I'm not really going to pray about this because it's so little. It's so small. I can remember one time I was working on a lawnmower, and, and so I was trying to get the blade off of this giant lawnmower that we'd got so we could mow the, the uh, yard that Melinda had to have. It was like you know, two and a half acres of yard. I, you know, nobody else did that. Everybody else had their little yard, and then you had pasture, right? Not us. So we'd gotten this big tractor, and I'm, I'm in, the, in the garage with the tractor hiked up, and I'm trying to get the blades loose because they're torn up because we're, we're mowing a lot of stubble and things like that, right? So I've, I learned when I was a kid, if you can't get it loose, you get one of those swamp pipes, right? You get the long piece of pipe and put on that wrench, and so I was pulling on it. And, I mean, I worked for an hour, and I never did get the thing loose. So finally, I thought, well, I'm going to pray about this. Jesus, will you help me do this? But I did that while I was pulling on it, right? And I said, Jesus, Jesus, help me. And all of a sudden, I hit myself in the head. The blade came loose, or the bolt came loose, so I, took the bl I got the blade off, but I had to go fix my head. And I thought, okay, he answered my prayer. And so how small was that? That was pretty small in, in his world, really. In my world, it was pretty important at the time. So I think our prayers are always important regardless of how big they are or how small they are. They are important. If nothing else, it gives us a chance to voice what we would have in our Father. What, what, we, would, what would we would consider a blessing today, right? Even if you got up and you put on a, a pair of shoes that just didn't fit right, the blessing would be if you prayed about it, it probably wouldn't give you any calluses or any blisters on your feet well that's a little out there isn't it all isn't it all out there isn't it all something that we wonder about isn't the mystery of prayer the same as the mystery of Jesus and the things that we do not understand and how he comprehends those things like the alphabet like what seemed to be a joke this morning he just kind of puts things together for us he just kind of works like that I'd like to give you an example, but there's so many and we don't have time. We don't have time for me to give you the examples of the times he worked in my prayer life. And, and I'll tell you this, I could give you some examples of the times that I should have prayed that I didn't, that, uh, well, I found out later I should have probably prayed about that, right? We keep on asking, not sure your prayers will be, uh, make any difference in the world, 
Well, even if they just make a difference in you that day, even if they just make a difference in you that moment in your life, that moment, whether you're discouraged, whether you're disheartened, whether you're just crazy about the way things are going in the world, that one moment that you're in prayer, that takes care of a moment for you. Because let me tell you, we get moments. We get moments and moments and moments. We don't get like a whole picture of everything. We have this minute right now, this moment right now. The next moment will take care of itself. Right? The next moment is maybe tomorrow or the next day or whatever it is that you're looking for in your prayer life. Where the answer comes from. I like a God who, when he thinks no about what I'm asking for, he definitely lets me know that it's a no. Melinda, you want to testify? Okay. Because there's no doubt how he answers prayers sometimes. It's assuredly, we always get an answer. There's always an answer, right? Right? So as you walk through Elijah here, you're seeing a man that not only is he a prayerful man, he's a prophet. He's a guy, if you'll remember the story, he's a guy that the widow and her son, right? Just goes and lays down on him and the boys just, Elijah, Elijah, Elijah. He's the one who tells the, the, the woman that if she would just bring him a little bit of oil. and a little, I mean, these are things that God does through him, right? And then she has, her staples are forever and ever and ever. They keep on working. That oil jar keeps on getting full and it keeps on working. Every time she brings it out now, she can prepare food, right? The flour, every time she brings it out now, she can prepare food. Regardless of what she thought was a little bit, now it becomes abundantly more and more and more. And so Elijah does that through God. He says this and it happens. So now we see him at the beginning of this story here. We see him in a place where he's not only running from a uh, from a crazy king and a oh that Jezebel. What's that mean, old Jezebel? Boy, that'll make you run. Just that name, huh? So he's hiding out from them, right? He's in a fearful state. And he knows what God can do. He knows what he's asked God to do. He's seen what God can do in his life. He's seen what the answers to prayer are. And and yet, when the angel appears and tells him, you know, get up, eat. You got some stuff to do, buddy. (laughs) I mean, he's, he's already called fire down from the sky to, I mean, he, he's done all that, but yet he has to have a reminder from God. You don't think his prayer's getting answered? That's one of those prayers that, whoo, you can't change that. So he winds up in a cave on the mountain of God. He's in a cave, right? So earthquake, sounds like the weather report today, as a matter of fact. There's an earthquake, there's a, a hurricane, it doesn't say hurricane, and there's storm, whatever you want to call it, right? It, so there's that blowing through, blowing over the mountain. And then you get the quake, of course. You get get the good stuff. Probably some hail in there. I'm not sure if Elijah had a wheat crop, but I'm sure he was worried about it, if he did. The hail. Lightning. Thunder. And then on top of that, fire. Sound like today's news? Yeah. So he's inside the cave, so everything's, everything's fine. He's safe. He's safe in there, right? But he's hearing all this noise and all this stuff, and then all of a sudden... It's a silence. It's a deafening quiet. Now, those of you who have toddlers and kids know a deafening quiet does just not happen on a regular basis anywhere. If you've ever been through a family life, you know. Deafening quiet is something we all should get to hear. But sometimes we don't. The storm, the chaos, the stuff that just keeps on happening, sometimes in our lives, it makes it hard to hear that. Regardless if we put the cape around our face and go out into where the storm was because we hear something in the silence, small voice. 
That's the God I hear all the time. But the problem is, I don't turn the radio or TV down long enough to hear it because I've got it up real loud, so I'm not really hearing what he's saying to me because I'm busy doing something else, right? Time to turn down the radio, turn down, <laughs> turn down the TV. Put down these. <laughs> I just wanted to prove to you that I could preach from an iPad. I can preach right out in the open with an iPad. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, good timing, right? Let me see where I was. Just a communication with God is what we're talking about. Elijah up there, he's waiting for something to happen. He doesn't know what it is, but he's expecting to be killed by the king. Because the king is listening to Jezebel and she wants him dead. I don't know what that woman's problem is. Okay, I do. So silence is what we're looking for. We're looking for a place where the fire has ended. We're looking for a place where the earthquake has finished. We're looking for a place where the storm has blown over. And so I just wonder if Elijah was praying when he was in that cave. Was he saying, God, I am so fearful right now. Protect me, God. What's going on in the world? Everything is crashing around me. Everything is blowing up. They're trying to kill me, and here you are sending these storms and all this stuff, but it says in there God was not in the storm. God was not in the fire. God was not in the wind. Wait a minute. I thought he was in everything. Apparently not. Your storms can be caused by something else, apparently. I, I can't preach on that, I know. It's a cultural difference. You can't preach on Satan. You can't preach on the things that are going on in the world. You can't preach on the things that are happening as if they're anything but a blessing. I want to tell you, hell is still hot and God still rules. And Jesus is still going to win. I read the last chapter of the book. Yeah. And Jesus is still going to win. So why would we not take the time to converse with the victor? Why would we not take our lives and spend time with Jesus, the winner? We all want a winner. It's getting to be football season. We all, you know, I know there's other sports. I don't really know that, but I, people tell me there are other sports. I like other sports, but I really like football because, you know what, at the end of it, somebody wins. So I want to be a winner, so I pick the winner. I've been a Kansas City fan for 30 years, forever. <laughs> Not forever. And so the other night, they're on TV, and I tell Melinda, I said, hey, I'm going to watch, uh, I'm going to watch the game tonight, you know, just see, see if they're going to be good again this year, you know. I forgot all about it. Got a phone call, and so I'm sitting in the parsonage there, and I said, man, there's nothing on TV tonight. And does my wife remind me that I told her Kansas City played football that day? No, she doesn't. So I prayed, and I said, Jesus, next time, you know, Kansas City's playing, would you just give me a reminder? So we'll see. That's a small thing, isn't it, Ronnie? I mean, a small thing that I'm praying for. Well, let's just see how that happens. Thanks for wearing red today. KC. We have that in us every day. That's what I'm saying. See, that's, we need to move my clock where it's where I can see it when I'm... Oh, my goodness, I've got plenty of time. We have this to end, okay? The fact there is nothing that he doesn't want to hear about. Right? There's nothing that's going on in your life that he doesn't want to hear about. He wants to hear your every thought. He knows your every thought, but he wants to hear. He wants to be able to say, you know what? Not only do I know what's going on in your life, you know what's going on in your life. You know the bad stuff. You know the good stuff. You know, right? You know what's happening. And I want to hear about it. I want to hear what you think about that. I want to be able to answer your prayers 
but I've got to know them. I've got to hear you know them. I've got to hear what you have to say about them. I've got to hear the direction that you want. Now, if it's not the direction, this is God talking. If it's not the direction that I want, if it's not in my will, your prayers are going to be answered in a funny little manner. A peculiar way. Right? Peculiar is in the Bible. But you're going to get an answer. That's the whole point of this. So when you pray, just pray. Be, be honest. I'm not going to ask you to stand up in church and pray out loud and be honest about it. That would be embarrassing. But it wouldn't be to God. It wouldn't be embarrassing to God. He already knows you're junk anyway. I mean, that's, my grandma used to say, you're in the book of life. You're in the book of life. You're in the book of life. Well, he's also got a list of things that are junk for you too <laughs> that you need to be shedding, a, 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 you know, getting away from, shedding, sloughing off, whatever you want to call it. And, and so to know him better, he needs to hear you know you better. And as you get to know him better, you will understand that all he wants is for you to give up everything so that he can help so that he can be in control of your life. He wants to see and hear and do what you need to be his. See, hear, and do, right? There's a, a thing that I learned a few years back, probably more than that, as a pastor that I watch occasionally, and, and uh, he said, uh, pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. Push. So it stuck with me because I'm not good at sticking things. I know who, what was a number one hit in 1967, but I, other than that, things don't stick in my head very well. But push stuck in my head. Pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. Something happens. There's an answer coming. This is the way I take that. So push, everybody, push. Pray until something happens. I'm going to pray until something happens. I'm going to pray until something happens. I'm going to keep praying until something happens. Will you pray with me? God, you have the answers for everything. Allow us to trust in you enough to share, share our problems, share our glory, share our appreciation of you. Help us celebrate. Help us heal. Help us mourn. Help us with all the things that you created us to do. Most of all, give us understanding today that the understanding is this, that we can get rid of anything we need to get rid of. You will put us right underneath your arm and you will be our protector, our healer, our glorious leader. We need nothing but you. Take us to your word so we find more and more about you daily. Let us learn from you as you have sent your son to save each of us. And your blessed grace, your amazing grace that you bestow to each of us, even though we do not deserve it. We thank you for those things on this Sunday. Amen and amen. Would you please stand and join in our hymn of invitation this morning on page 369 in your red hymnal, Blessed Assurance. Salvation, purchase of God, born of
of his spirit washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, green from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Your blessing today says, go forth to love one another, be rich in faith, and serve one another in all joy and humility. And may the power of God, our Creator, Christ our salvation, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen? Amen. Good job.